we rely a lot on uh, like you know instant messaging apps like whatsapp signal uh, facebook messenger instagram uh, tiktok discord etc however the issue is uh, we can't rely on those messaging software when we want to chat on the dark web and and we have been talking about a lot on, about like you know the email service providers i i in the previous epi- episodes we discussed about what are the email uh, like you know secure uh, e- service providers that you should be using especially on the dark web what are the features they have how do they preserve privacy anonymity etc uh same thing if you want to operate on the dark web or if you want to even even on the clear net if you want to preserve your privacy anonymity uh i don't think so like this kind of messaging software which are easily available like whatsapp and everything is not going to be uh, very much useful so that's what we are going to uh, start in this series or in this episode onwards i'll probably like you know doing uh, three four episode we we will chat about the different uh, messaging software that we should you should be using especially if you are if you want to explore the dark web uh, you want to communicate securely etc so that's what we're going to chat about and if you haven't already please hit the thumbs up button it just takes a second and it will help me immensely also provide me the feedback at the end of the video uh, how you like it and and what are the other things that you would like to see all right so let's get into it so we talked about like you know whatsapp and skype so what are the issues with it uh, first of all these are not uh, like you know uh, private so uh, what what i meant is uh, these are owned by like you know uh, facebook and meta uh, per se like skype microsoft etc and the issue is uh, they have full control on the software and the and the code and the infrastructure that this messaging softwares are running they ca- tell us like for example whatsapp whatsapp i guess a couple of years ago they introduced uh, end to end encryption uh, now we are not like there is no way for us to validate whether it indeed provides the end to end encryption we don't have any uh, like you know visibility into their servers or infrastructure so that's that's one issue um, whether our communication is end to end encrypted or not second the issue is uh, of course like you know whatsapp is a uh, they they want to of course make money out of this uh, they they don't do this for social services they want to make money so they are obviously tracking users they are also tracking our messages uh, activities uh, right everything and that way that that's how uh, we are not private at all so especially if you want to uh, buy something on the dark web or, or if you are doing some some exchange uh, you cannot use whatsapp for sure uh, it's it's not private at all uh, because they might also be selling your activities to some other companies as well and you can also read their privacy policy so they might not be logging uh, all the user activities or selling to someone but they are obviously logging lot of uh, like you know data and within that logs that might be possible that they are also logging what kind of messages the users are sending and receiving and maybe more activity we don't have any insight into it so that's why just purely uh, like you know because the lack of visibility i i feel like we should not be using uh, this kind of instant messaging especially on the dark web and the other thing is they are also not secure uh, and when most of the software like you know whatsapp for example we have seen some of the biggest hack and and one of the hack that uh, we have seen earlier was somebody just calls you you don't have to do even anything and and like if you receive the call your whatsapp could be could get hacked so due to this kind of vulnerabilities as well it becomes somewhat uh, uh, like you know difficult for us to adopt this kind of messaging especially on the dark web and on top of that suppose your software uh, like apps are secure uh, but suppose the operating system that uh, like you know it's inst- installed is not so secure like it doesn't have like privacy for example ios android they could have vulnerability but on top of vulnerability they are logging lot of things right what we are installing what we are uninstalling um activities on each applications etc uh so again uh, that's also out of our control now to prevent this what we can do is uh, the one that video we have seen before um uh, is tails how to install tails and how to use tails so we can obviously use tails to uh, do this instant messaging and and still on the secure os 
So what is the solution? We talked about all the problems that we have seen, uh, we have been facing using this WhatsApp and Skype. So the solution is using the XMPP. Uh, this is an open source uh, uh, software which anyone can use and uh, and it's decentralized just like Tor. So no one, there is not a central body who controls uh, this, this servers. Even you and I can um, set up the server, use the server and, and start chatting. And this one is very, very popular on the dark web. So let's see some of, uh, like, you know, some details about it. Uh, so XMPP, instant messaging, uh, this was like, you know, introduced, uh, in 1998. So pr pretty much long time ago when there was like AOL, uh, instant messenger and ICQ. All of the existing servers, clients, programming libraries support the key features of an IEM system, such as one to one and multi party messaging, present subscription notifications and client contact list. Because user expectation for the messaging apps continue to change over time, community always works to define and implement extensions and new features. And if you see, uh, like probably if you go back on the home page, you would see there are a lot of, uh, I'm not able to find it, but yeah, Zoom and pretty much all the uh, major companies are using uh, like, you know, XMPP in the back background. Uh, Okay, yeah, sorry, here it is. So you can see WhatsApp uses a variation of XMPP. Uh, Kick Messenger is also using it. Zoom is also using it. So they are, they're of course, like, you know, modifying a little bit, but they are ultimately using XMPP. Now, there are some uh, myth about using XMPP. Not er everything, like, you know, uh, is relevant to us, especially uh, talking about security about slowness but uh, i think you should read through it because some of sometimes you also have some myth uh so one of that is xmpp is not secure but it in the fact is it's state of art end-to-end -end encryption and relatively high degree of uh, pseudonymity what that means is uh, now you you could argue earlier we said like whatsapp also provides end-to-end -end encryption but we don't have any visibility this is open source so you can actually test it out whether it's an end-to-end -end encryption or not Right. So that's why, uh, again, this is our main concern. Like, you know, uh, this Facebook and, and WhatsApp are not privacy friendly. But here, as you can see, XMV will interact with metadata and privacy must be enforced by the implementary and server administrators. So, like, you know, there are some basic uh, security uh, baseline configuration which they have implemented and specified that anyone who is running the server so for example if i and you want to run, start running the server we have to meet certain baseline and 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 once we meet the baseline it will be listed on this public xmpp servers uh, like you know uh, which you can use on the tour and and how do we know if everyone has met those requirement is by seeing this xcp compliance so you can see excellent, good and bad, right? So for example, if you click on excellent, you will see these are the specification that have been defined by the standard. And if you pass, then yeah, you will have the excellent. You don't need to read through everything every time, but I'm just showing you for example. So here it says bad. That means like, you know, some of these things are, they're failing. So probably we should not use uh, this particular server. So, so given that, uh, of course, you can also file this on the Tor Hidden Services. By the way, I've linked this into the description. So, uh, don't worry. Uh, like, you know, feel free to check out all the servers and you can, I'll show you how to use this, uh, uh, in, in a few minutes. But yeah, uh, they also have like no captcha disabled. Uh, this one, I think is particular discontinued probably last month. So, um it's not something we want to focus on but yeah you can go through this and and then if you want to uh register from the tour you can use this address or if you just want to use it uh from uh, like you know clear net you can use this address so let's try to register on one of the server uh so you go here of course the language might you might have to translate but i think i can understand this one is for registration so as you can see, it requires very minimal information, just the username, password, and the confirmed password. So let's say, as we say, cyber sec. Now what you can also do is, you can use, like, let's say you want to chat with somebody temporarily, you can create a, uh, like, you know, uh, alias or the username. Uh, of course, you don't want to use your actual alias, you just want to use the fake identity, which we talked about in the first or second episode of the dark web. Uh, go back and check it out if you haven't already. 
So if you want to chat with someone temporarily, you can create like a new uh, uh, username every other week or every uh, like, you know, uh, every week. And that's that's how easy it is. So let's put the password in and uh, we just need to make sure uh, we are human and we are not any bot or something. So I think this is good. All right. And hit register. Okay registering is successful all right so this is how easy it is to register on these servers uh, i would also say like you know use this one uh, this one is very popular this mail also it has like you know uh, everything in english so it's also easier uh, uh, but right now i i already have an account here but uh, you can see here uh, too much too many people so i have decided to stop registration of new users so uh, right now uh, like you know unfortunately if you are trying to register now you probably would not get because this is very very popular that's why i took the example of this one but of course you can still uh, go through the list here and and try to see that there are a lot of excellent ones so maybe you can just go through it and and find your like you know the best you like it so I think I think that's about it. I wanted to uh, keep it short and concise in this first episode. Probably give you an introduction on what are the uh, like you know chatting or instant messaging services that are available, and probably in the following lectures we're gonna see what, how do we use it, how do we get most out of it, etc. Now, one thing I would highly request you, if you have used any of this, like, you know, public servers and, and mail servers uh, to chat about the dark web, please post it in the comment. I also want to learn and also our community. Uh, I think that's how we can share knowledge and, and help each other out. Uh, but that's all. If you have any questions, uh, feel free to put a comment uh, and reach out to me. I'll try my best to answer it. Of course, there are just a lot of comments. So I, I'm trying my best to go through everything. Uh, but that's it. Uh, I hope uh, you have a good day and I'll see you guys next week. Bye-bye.